Welcome to Tracy Momi Reads. I am back again with another video. Okay, so this week I am going to be talking about a, um, a nonfiction book that I read that's very popular. I've had it for a while and I've known about it. I've even probably posted, you know, like a graphic of its summary somewhere um, and things like that. But this was my first time actually reading it you know, cover to cover each page and really ingesting, you know, what was meant behind the, the graphics and the um, commentary you hear about it. And that book is The Four Agreements by Don uh, Miguel Ruiz, The Four Agreements. And as you can see, not only have I flagged it to death, but this book is very um, small. It is a total of, um, let me see, without his acknowledgments and without the prayers that are in the back, it's only 129 pages, right? So for those of you who might be familiar, right? If you haven't read the book, I'm sure you've heard of the four agreements. And um, the four agreements themselves are be impeccable with your word, don't take anything personally, don't make assumptions and always do your best, right? So with me reading those, even if you have not read this book, you've heard of those. You've heard them, you've seen them. Uh, people probably have mentioned them or, you know, quote <laughs> the book. And um, I think just from those four agreements, we kind of glean, or we think we do. We think we try to make the uh, connection and think we know what is meant by those things, right? When I first saw, you know, like the, for example, be impeccable with your word. Basically, that means, you know, living up to and doing the things you're going, that you say you're going to do. But the thing about it is in the four agreements, they're encouraging you to do that to yourself. It's like about you. That's what the four agreements are, an agreement you're making with yourself. Not necessarily um being impeccable with your word if you tell somebody you're going to do something you make sure you do it it's no if you tell yourself you're going to do something you know it's not about how it benefits other people but more so how these things benefit yourself so the book is based on um it's a book of ancient toltec wisdom and the toltec were the indigenous people that lived in mexico before the Aztecs. So this was, this was pre-Aztecs. And it was just um, kind of their way of life and uh, the way that they lived their lives and how they passed this down from generation to generation, right? You know, and I, I, it, it was full of plenty aha moments, uh, but I found most of them to be reminders because again, I've seen so many of these, uh, the agreements that they mentioned in the book uh, plastered in some form or another, whether the words have been um, kind of reversed or the words have been, you know, other words have been used, the gist is still the same, right? But um, the other thing I found interesting was that throughout the book, so the, the author is saying that we, we are all born to adhere to certain belief systems, you know, from the time we're babies or toddlers when your parents are, you know, guiding and correcting you and telling you, you know, this is what's right, this is what's wrong. Um, they even uh, uh, frame your, your, your belief system, you know, as far as if you grew up in the church or you grew up believing in God or not believing in God and, and all of those things, um, they're saying that we're just wired to believe kind of whatever we're told like this, this is how life works and you operate within those parameters right so on one hand he's like encouraging you to kind of find out what the truth is for yourself but i just thought it was interesting because he's framing it in the fact that you should believe in these four things which they're not bad things to believe in but again there, there are things that you have to believe in right there's someone's giving you guidance as opposed to you just being out in the world willy-nilly <laughs> just doing whatever you want or coming to your own conclusions um and another thing they the toltec system 
it, it basically, um, the, the belief is that there's heaven and hell on earth, right? And the way you choose to live your life can determine whether or not you live in hell or you live in heaven here while you're on earth. It's not so much looked at as an um, afterlife type situation. So yeah, so there's a lot of, you know, um, religious undertones um, and, and things like that in the book, but not like um, they're encouraging you to believe one or the other. They're just giving you these uh, guidelines as to how you can make your situation better or worse, essentially. Um, and one of the things that I totally agree with that was at the crust of this little book, um, which again, this is like you, you hear this all the time and it just serves as a reminder, but I agree that most of the suffering that we experience individually comes from our own choices, right? Most of it, you know, uh, comes from our own choices. However, I do believe that general suffering, you know, outside of what we can even control, I mean, that exists. It comes from things that we don't even have a hand in. Um, like, let's say something like systemic racism, you know, I wouldn't choose that for myself, right? So I didn't make that choice. It, it, it's kind of like in that um, Tupac song that Lonnie has, you know, don't blame me. I was, uh, I didn't make, I was given this world, I didn't make it. Yeah, I think that that's what, it, what he says. But inherently though, you, I guess you still have a choice as to how you live your life under those circumstances, you know what I mean? Like, do you fall victim uh, to the oppression? Do you just allow it to continue? Do you just give up and have a defeatist attitude because racism exists, you know what I mean? So it's those kinds of things that you have control over, but the, the bigger system, that takes more of a, I mean, ginormous, um, like, uh, society effort and whether, you know, something like that would even be obliterated in our lifetime, you know, it's probably unlikely, but you know, I love the idea of the four agreements as a principle and I've highlighted, oh my God, there's so many things in here. So many, like I said, aha moments, so many gems. Uh, I was posting some of them during my, uh, while I was reading it, like in my, uh, story, um, like one of the things, for, you know, like out of the gate when I talked about uh, how like our belief systems and things that we come to adhere to, they start with our parents, right? And and again, you know, I've talked about this in several, like touched on it and I already talked about it, but when, you know, we talk about like generational trauma and things like that, it, it's like various belief systems, things that have been passed down from generation to generation. Like there's this thing in here where he says, we train our children whom we love so much the same way that we train any domesticated animal with a system of punishment and reward. <laughs> and that, when you think about it, I mean, it, it's so true. And on one hand, while it's, it's, it's sad and it sounds sad that, you know, you're potentially treating your children like you would treat a pet. The other part of that is, you know, again, I'm from a whole other generation, you know, and I'm not saying any, like any of this is right <laughs> or wrong. You have to, you know, live your life and make your decisions based on your individual circumstances, right? But I do believe that for humans, who some may argue that we're, we're a, a type of animal in itself, we're, we're a species, right? But I do believe that much like, you know, some animals, um, it's like if you don't have an incentive to do right, Or, you know, I'm trying to think of how I want to say this because I, I don't want people trying to flame me for my comments. I'll just say what I'm going to say and then I'll try to give, uh, uh, explain more what I mean. 
if because you can go down the road of saying well who who says what's right and who says what's wrong and and not to get biblical or anything because let's let's throw the bible out of it let's throw the ten commandments out of it let's say that none of that even exists i think that we could all agree that killing somebody just randomly that you don't even know that you have never met that has done nothing to you that has done nothing to your family but you cause that person physical pain or you take their life i mean that's wrong is it not i mean really nobody has to tell you that that's wrong you don't have to you know like be given a bible that says thou should not kill to know that's wrong so back to the punishment and reward thing you should absolutely be punished for something like that because if we did not punish people for their wrongdoings, uh, you know, really, especially egregious wrongdoings, then society, I feel like, would collapse. It would totally collapse and stuff because it, it would be no rules. People could just do whatever they want, which you kind of see that in, in, in some forms of fashion happening already. It makes me sick to my stomach when I see, you know, there's so many people that post these videos, these masked people running into stores, just grabbing shit and just walking out the front door while security stands by. And I know, I mean, that's not anything to lose your life over. And I know the companies have insurance, but just imagine for a moment, just imagine if everyone started to do that. Like if everyone just said, you know what, to hell with it. I'm not paying for anything. Anything I want, I'm going to go take. Number one, the stores will probably shutter their doors because they, no, they they fear for their lives. They fear for their employees' lives. Uh, they, they probably will not be able to keep any merchandise in the stores because they're losing money. And then you have a situation where, because it, it's not going to just stop at, clothes next people would be well i want a steak or my baby needs formula i don't have the money or i have the money and i just want to be an asshole and i want to go take it that is where when you see these movies you know about um like post-apocalyptic worlds and things like that i don't know that there's going to be some apocalypse that happens from you know heaven raining hell down on earth or anything i think humans are going to be the 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 cause of our own demise i really really do because when it happens that we run out of the necessities and let's say i have some stockpiled in my garage then you're going to start having people come scavenging and maybe potentially like kill you for the things that you have because they want them or they need them it starts with shit that we don't think is all that important. You know, and when I see those videos of people running through stores doing that shit, you have all these people in the comments, you know, like let's say um, in one, I remember a security guard like got involved and they were like, that's not his stuff. Hey, why, why? I wouldn't even, and, I, and, and to a point they're right. Like I said, that's not his stuff and you don't want to risk your life. But if you don't stand up for something, I mean, what, what is going to become of this world? And I think that's where they talk about each individual based on their choices. It, it can also make life heaven or hell for other people. So if we all just take responsibility for our own choices, number one, how they impact us. And if we're making good choices for ourselves, that is going to kind of be the, the, the version that the world gets. So if we, if we feel good with ourselves, if we're happy with ourselves, we're doing things that are going to benefit ourselves, it's going to benefit the world at large. So hopefully that made sense and I made that connection. I know I kind of went off on a tangent there. So back to the punishment uh, and reward system. Um, in the book, he also talks about how we punish ourselves when we don't... Um, follow rules according to our belief system things that have been taught to us and even though we didn't choose those beliefs we agreed to them you know like subconsciously so when you don't do something or you do something that goes against what you were taught or told to believe then you know you you have all this um guilt right because you're in shame and things like that um, he also talks about how uh, the human is the only animal on earth that pays a thousand times for the same mistake. And, you know, if, if you're like, um, let's say you, in any kind of relationship, whether it's a romantic relationship, family relationship, um, friendship, 
and you do something wrong, right? Even though the people that maybe you've wronged or maybe you wronged yourself in some kind of way, let's say you were addicted to drugs and you know, you got the help that you needed and uh, you, you, you've been sober, you know, you've been clean, but truthfully, there's always going to be somebody that sees you as an addict. You know, it's like, you're going to continue to pay for that mistake you made, no matter how, you know, much better you become. Um, and it's the same thing with people who go to jail, you know, that they have permanent stains on their records, depending on, um, what the crime is. It may be a situation where they can't ever, like um, hold down certain jobs. They may not be able to uh, vote um, and things like that. And again, it goes back to the punishment and reward, you know, but a lot of times, as we know, sometimes some punishments don't fit the crimes. Like some people get off way too easy for horrible, horrible things that they've done. And then other people, they may have some minor infraction that did not even hurt anybody but themselves and they get a whole lot more time. So yeah, so it, it just really gives you, you know, some really good food for thought and brings up things that people just are not, conversations people are not ready to have with themselves or, or with their families or with their communities, but they should. Um, one more line from the book. He says that if we look at human society, we see a place so difficult to live in because it is ruled by fear my god i mean come on every everything you know that if you can think of it there's this fear whether it's you're you're feel fearful of another person because of their religion and you think they're gonna do something to you you're fearful of another person because of their race you think that they're gonna do something to you uh you're fearful of people because of their beliefs you know it, it's fear that you know all the black people are going to take the jobs all the you know mexican people are going to come over and do blah 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 uh they're trying to take our guns um you know uh what if china comes over we got to get our bombs ready that is all fear based and that is so the the outward reaction and projection to all of that is what keeps us living under these laws and systems and uh, different things that oppress like the majority of the people in our society. So yeah, it is a it is it is a very deep book if you allow your mind to be open enough to really um, understand what he's talking about. And um, I don't know. I, like I said, a lot of it I feel like it was redundant because I'd heard it before. And it, and even in the book, they kind of go over it and over it because each um, section is one of the agreements and it's kind of linked to the first agreement. I mean, you know, it, it links to the previous agreement, right? So I'm just going to just go through these one more time in the four agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. The first one, again, it's be impeccable with your word. And uh, I'll read just like the brief description. Speak with integrity. Say only what you mean. Avoid using your words to speak against yourself or to gossip about others. Use the power of your word in the direction of truth and love. Number two, don't take anything personally. Nothing others do is because of you. How many times have we heard this? And I'm just not getting to the point in my big old age. I'm really starting to understand that. What others say and do is project a is a projection of their own reality, their own dream. When you are immune to the opinions and actions of others, you won't be the victim of needless suffering. Number three, don't make assumptions. This is, this is such a key. Find the courage to ask questions and to express what you really want. Communicate with others as clearly as you can to avoid misunderstanding, sadness, and drama. With just this one agreement, you can completely transform your life. And then the last one is always do your best. Your best is going to change from moment to moment. It will be different when you are healthy as opposed to sick. Under any circumstance, simply just do your best and you will avoid self-judgment, self-abuse, and regret. I mean, what more can you say? Such a small book, but packs a really big punch. If you are looking for a book that is going to hit you intellectually, emotionally, you know, um, and, and all of that. And you're just looking for a reset 
or something as we end this year and go into a new year. Um, if you want something that gives you some practical guides that you can follow, if you are looking to make some changes in your life, then the four agreements definitely would fit the bill for you. So I would love to know if you have read the four agreements, what were your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video and thank you to everyone who has taken the time to leave a comment, who has subscribed, who has liked my videos. I sincerely appreciate it. If you have not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the post notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Uh, thanks again, guys. You have a great weekend. Bye. <music>